As my family of four takes a seat at a table, we are met with familiar waves and grins from the owner. It was about time we got acquainted with her. We frequently dined at the Taiwanese restaurant, Yummy Boba, for our family dinners. As she hands us menus, it is comedic. We always order the same thing. Kung Pao chicken, tofu stir fry, crab roe, and cabbage. As the food is finally being rushed out for our hungry and impatient selves, the pleasant aroma consumes the air around me. I quickly add the food into my bowl of rice. The meat, tofu, and cabbage all complement one another so well. If I were to close my eyes right now, I could still taste the savoriness of the food. The steamy, succulent chicken topped off with caramelized sauce and punctuated peanuts, my teeth easily sinking in its tenderness. The cabbage, still shimmering from the wash beforehand, but packed with a creamy seafood flavor. For my sister, the squishy tofu swimming in a bed of celery and fungi. Afterwards, we would order shaved ice for dessert, come with a multitude of toppings, boba, grass jelly, red bean, anything we wanted. We would be digging in and craving for seconds. Life was delictively perfect. Then, oversized sweaters, crumpled napkins, suspiciously going to the bathroom right after meals. The perfect cover-up. What is anorexia nervosa? The short answer is that it diagnosed my sharp-witted older sister, Katie, in February of 2016. The long answer? It diagnosed our whole family alongside her. The moment she was diagnosed, Katie's ED stood as a eventual disaster to me. My parents, already struggling with their marriage with one another, had to consistently plate her three meals and three snacks per day with a situated contract in place for optimal compliance. It didn't help that she was vegan. About 30 million Americans, one in five women, and one in seven men experience eating disorders in her lifetime. And with anorexia, is accompanied with intense fear and perception of gaining weight. So essentially, she had a restrictive diet and was struggling with eating. We were traveling up to San Diego weekly for a residential regime and educating ourselves through group family sessions. We all existed in Katie's world. I felt guilty. I was grappling between being a supportive sister and simultaneously eyeing the attention that my parents would give her. Everything appeared so attributed to her eating disorder. She came home late. It was her ED. She was mean to me. It was her ED. We couldn't go on any more family vacations. Why did I have to sacrifice so much? Tests and quizzes did not stop for what was happening at home. At a high-performing school, we were expected to show up every single day equipped to compete. It didn't help that I was taking harder classes. I went to my classes every single day with this painted-on, unfazed, sunny disposition because none of this bothered me that much. But note, Sarah, it definitely did. Deep down, I was still exhausted from the emotional roadblocks from the previous nights. It was as if I was walking a tightrope. I would find myself having control of my balance just to be slipping over my feet again. It was synonymous to my happiness seemingly being clouded with inevitable sadness. I was struggling to find comfort in who I was. Two years ago, when my sister was rushed to the ER by her friends, my parents and I frantically rushed over to meet her at the hospital. I got out of the car early while my parents drove to find parking. I remember just standing outside in the cold parking lot alone. Tense stance, arms crossed, breeze blowing in my hair and face. I looked up to see the glass reflecting off, the light reflecting off the glasses with the 14 rows of illuminated rooms. The reality is that everybody struggle, people struggle with things that nobody could possibly know about. And the lit up rooms are indicative that behind every window, there's a body. I came to a conclusion that it isn't about me. This all didn't happen overnight. I'm still trying to make sense of things, but I'm so grateful to have all that I have with all I am. Now I'm able to look at the glass half full. I have seen my sister's struggles and 
it has helped me prosper socially as well, as I'm able to empathize with those who have also gone through adversity. With looking at the glass half full, I decided to look at the first aspect, tennis. I decided to train with determination and not for, for long, my partner, Kate Chang and I, were number one in the league, something I could have only imagined in my fantasies. At school, I yearned to be a better student by asking those crucial questions and consulting with my friends to go to the local library, in which I had acquired my highest test scores yet. It only worked because I was finally an active participant in my life. Of course, it was not a straight trajectory of happy moments. There would be moments where I would be out to lunch with mom, and I would be trying to convey my feelings to her, and one thing would lead to another, and it resulted in a silent car ride back home. And there were moments where I would just be staring up at the ceiling on a school night, contemplating if I even wanted to go to school the next day. And it didn't help with social media. If I open TikTok, there is always a sad poem awaiting my eye's arrival. But now, Katie's ED stands as an emerging development to me. Katie is currently at UCLA double majoring in political science and psychology. She is a girl boss. I am also kind of a girl boss. Uh, though I have perfectionist, ten perfectionist tendencies, I stand here today not as a perfect student, or do I have the perfect story, but I'm channeling my defeats into something bigger, something greater. My sister and I have arrived at a page where we're able to compromise with one another. Of course, it's not a straight trajectory of happy moments, but we are finally able to follow one another on Instagram, something that might not seem like a big deal, but before, I was hesitant to expose my inner life with her because I didn't know what she would comment on it, and I didn't want to let her into my, the intimacy of my safe space. But now, she is my safe space. At the end of the day, it is okay to not be okay. A grim moment is not eternity, but it is bearable. Self-care is so important. Go indulge in the things you like, whether that be being a couch potato, like me. But you're resting, and you're letting yourself rest, and that's important. We can't tackle the world and all that it has without us being in check first. We got this. We have to advocate for ourselves. My family is nowhere near perfect, but if I ask for a bowl of pho after a long day of school, you bet that my mom would take me. If I asked for boba after that pho, you bet that my dad would take me. And if I asked for even more food and drinks after all that, you bet that my sister would take me. Those are the moments that really matter. The moments of making a renewed comeback into your life. After all, success is not won, won through one moment. It is won through cataloging millions of moments. Each one a new step into a greater beginning. Thank you. Thank you.